Hey guys, get here. Today we're going to be doing another deck tech. This time it's on Bant Ramp. Um, so Bant Ramp's been an archetype for a while in Historic and in Standard. And it's just in a really good spot right now because it has a lot of good tech for the meta right now. And it's just really, really proactive. Like you can just sit there, ramp, and get your win cons rolling. So uh, let's dig into the deck list. So uh, in regards to like mulliganing, you want to keep sensors, search, growth spiral, anything that costs two mana basically. And then maybe Uro. Wrath is pretty safe since you might be against aggro. And other than that, you want to chuck everything else. Uh, Shark Typhoon can be okay if you need another card to cycle super early for a land drop, but you typically don't want to keep that just because you have it, if that makes sense. These are definitely not cards you want in your starting hand either. Um, so that's pretty much it for mulliganing. Uro, uh, low low CMC, and then maybe a Wrath. And then other than that, you want like two or three lands. You're allowed to keep two lands more often if you have Sensor and Search. Not so much if you have Spiral because you need three lands for Spiral to be super effective because um, you want the extra land to play the next turn as well. So usually if you have these two, you're allowed to keep two landers on the play. If you're on the draw, you can keep two landers a little more, but three is where you want to be at for lands. Um, in regards to how the deck works, we basically just flow. We just go, okay, flow and go. So what that means is that we can cycle and or play our cards very cheap and get more cards in the graveyard to both flip as Kanta and so we can escape Uro later on. Typically you want to wait until you can flip as Kanta, but if as Kanta is nowhere in sight, uh, go ahead and use Uro if it's a really good tempo play, you know? Like if you think you can get there with Uro, it looks like a good opportunity. Don't wait for search while you can cast Uro, unless you have a lot of other things you can do with your turn. Um, Teferi is the win condition on top of Hydroid Crisis and Shark Typhoon. Most, more often than not, you're going to win the game with Shark Typhoon, whether that's hard casting or having like a 6-6 six, six Shark Typhoon that you cycled out. Um, so that's pretty much the main win con. Um, otherwise, it's typically like regular Bant Ramp, right? Like sometimes people only run two copies of Shark Typhoon and they run some other stuff. Like maybe two explorers, etc. I felt like we had enough ramp with the instant speed for spiral and Uro. Uh, you could trim some number of cards, but basically sensors taking the place of uh, explore right now. Uh, Sublime Epiphany. This is the card that probably stands out the most to to people who are familiar with Bant Ramp because they've never seen this in a Bant Ramp list where it's very uncommon. Um, the reason why I'm teching this is primarily for Ulamog because I kept losing against Bant Ramp. Um, and it's just a fun card. It's a really expensive counter spell, but with ramp, you can kind of get away with it. You get up to six mana a lot faster than you'd think. Um, so you can counter something, counter target activated or triggered. That's the thing that stops Ulamog, the triggered. Then you can counter Ulamog. Uh, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So we're able to like, you know, bounce an ECD maybe once in a while with this, or maybe a Krasis, or we bounce something on their side of the field so they have to play it again if they're on aggro or... Um, if they've got ramp, we can bounce like, you know, a Paradise Druid that might have tapped out to play Ulamog, etc. There's there's sometimes a target for that. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. This only comes into play usually when we have like Shark Typhoon uh, already hard cast, because then this card on the stack will make a 6-6, six, six, right? That resolves. Then we can declare that 6-6 six, six Shark Typhoon as a copy of target creature you control. We can copy Crassus, but it will just be a 0-0 zero, zero since it does not copy the amount of tokens or the amount of counters on it. So it's only really going to be useful um, with uh, Shark Typhoon. We could try to tech something like a Dream Trawler in the sideboard or main deck, but it's just a little clunky to, to make use of the create a token part portion of it. And then target player draws a card. So usually you'll have like at least counter target spell draws a card and then probably counter a triggered ability or uh, maybe you'll get like, you know, bounce something for tempo with this. It's just a really high value card. Uh, downsides, it can get mystical disputed, etc. It's pretty easy to counteract, censor, but when we actually get this going, usually against the decks that we really want to cast this, it will hit a home run for us because Ulamog players typically just tap out 
and then they don't have anything else. They're like a one-trick pony for the most part. Well, sometimes they have Nissa, etc., but I mean, we have neutralizes, all of that other stuff, blah, blah, blah. We'll get into the matchups here in a second, but you get the drift. Um, now, I will say that Whirlwind Denial does what I want this card to do, which is countering Ulamog and the triggered effect just as efficiently for three mana. So I've been thinking about this instead. I've been messing around with a new U-White control list that uh, humors the idea of using this um, sideboard instead of Sublime. Um, but for right now, I like the card, so I'm running it. All right, so uh, lands are, we only have one Vantress, and then everything else is pretty much Scry or, uh, not Scry, but Cycle or, Cycle, Shock, or Check. Um, and yeah, so let's get into the matchups, since we've get covered how the deck works. So matchups, we've got uh, Sakdos, Pyromancer, <clears throat> which I think we have an amazing matchup against. Sometimes we can pull away with game one, depending on how lucky we are, what we can counter, etc. What pieces we can kind of take off the table. And then game two, it's an automatic win almost when we get rest and peace rolling. They don't really work without their graveyard. Now the trick to that is sometimes not always keeping a hand with rest and peace. Like, don't mulligan directly for this card. You kind of want to draw into it because... Um, they're going to thought seize you, right? And if you keep the card that wins you the game in your hand and you have no way to get it back from your graveyard, that thought seize basically wins them the game in the same aspect as resolving it wins us the game. All right. So just keep that in mind when you, when you do that. Um, what else is there? It's like mono red burn, which I think we have an okay matchup with, with Uro for life gain. Um, and we have a pretty quick clock, like once things go on and... We have enough counter spells to kind of shut them down. Um, what else? We've got Sakdos, which we covered, Mono Red Burn, uh, Jund Food. I'd say Jund is a little bit rough just because of Reclamation Sage. Even if we bring in our sideboard cards, that card that 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 kind of hurts us a lot. But if we can counter the correct spells, like we can counter like maybe a Mayhem Devil early with Sensor or a Priest. Typically speaking, they'll they'll either Thought Seize the Sensor or uh, play around the sensor after the thought sees so like sometimes you'll have to cycle that etc but <clears throat> other than that like we have a pretty okay matchup just because we can grind it out for the most part you just get a counter like citadel and um wrath at the right times they have a lot of recursion especially with uh collected company coco because they can just take and you know put two mayhem devils into play or mayhem devil cat have the oven already online and just start ticking away and we don't have a lot of life gain to keep up with that. So that matchup's a bit tough. But I think it's still slightly favored with us with our sideboard. If we can hold up counter spells at the right time as well. Um, what other matchups are there? Simic Ramp I think we're pretty favored against now with the changes for Sublime and Whirlwind Denial on the sideboard. We're pretty teched against that. Um, they'll bring in like Mystical Disputes and stuff, especially if they see Sublime first game. Um, so just be careful with the second game basically against that. Uh, other than that, like I think that the matchup's pretty decent. Like we have a similar game plan where we're ramping up into super ignorant stuff like Shark Typhoon, and then we just got to hold the counter back for you know um, Ugin and Ulamog. This with Ulamog, this with Ulamog, etc. You know, and then veto for uh, Ugin so they can't counter us. Um, if they bring in like Destiny Spinner, that could be really annoying. But I don't think they will. I don't think that deck sideboards it because a lot of their win cons are planeswalkers. Um, I'm probably missing a few matchups. If I am, go ahead and comment uh, down below. Uh, aggro in general, that's a good one to cover. So aggro, um, I think we have a pretty decent matchup against it, especially after sideboarding, depending on what they are. Um, just because we have some baffling ends and um, some other stuff in the sideboard, like the extra wrath. So... Um, I think we have a decent matchup against most aggro lists. Some of them will go really fast, but I mean, that's... It, usually aggro with a nut draw will beat control with the nut draw. So, like, just because it goes so fast and it just ends the game. Like, if they get in, like, 16 damage early game, like, up to, you know, four, like, th up to turn three or four, then we wrath and then they still have a questing beast, like, we're done, right? That's just how it goes. Especially with mono green picking up interaction and stuff too. Harbinger is kind of hard to deal with sometimes for certain control. But that being said, um, 
uh that's like if i forgot any matchups feel free to throw them down in the comments below and i'll give you my opinion on the uh on the matchup and why um so moving along to the sideboard um we've got graph diggers baffling end so this is for like <clears throat> sactos sactos right but this is also for anything that uses like collected company um you can bring it in against goblins because it shuts off muxus stuff like that um, this you bring in against aggro, against Muxus, mono red, um, anything that this is viable with. Sometimes you'll bring it in for like shark typhoons if you don't want to keep in the like wraths or something. But that's kind of a weird thing that you'll you'll get a feel for like once you start understanding the deck a little bit more. Um, rest in peace. This is mostly for Sactos Pyromancer, but it can be useful against Jund and such. Um, now the key about this card rest in peace and graph diggers is when you bring these in uh take out the cards that are useless to you like uro and um search for Azcanta. so that's the problem with this list is once we take out uro and search we don't really have any life gain like that's hard so i think that we should probably have some other source of life gain in here when we go to do that because the pyromancer list can typically burn you out for the most part so that's a little hard but that's that's the general game plan for now. That's what when these come in. Uh Vito, this is for like the control matchups against ramp, so you can counter Ugin without it being contested. Um, that type of deal. Um, this could also you could think about running some number of disdainful strokes, so you also have useful cards against goblins instead of this, but you'll be weaker to counter magic in the other matchups. But that's something to consider here. Disdainful stroke instead of this. Uh, two whirlwind denials if you think the sublimes are enough these are just this is just me overcompensating for ulamog so if you're losing to ulamog en enough like even bump this up um but i like it just to have four answers to ulamog um it's also good against crisis so that's something to consider also sublime is good against crisis too uh wrath i mean pretty pretty self-explanatory you bring it in against aggro uh, and then this is for Jun food, anything that runs multiple enchantments. If you happen to come across a shrine deck in best of three, the Brave Souls, you know, this is really good against them too. It's also good against traditional like mono red with like Ember Cleave and X, etc. And they're just using some other cards like Chain Whirler for uh, historic. But typically speaking, it's goblins and this isn't too expensive, like too great against them. Um, so that covers the deck and the sideboard. Uh, let's jump into the gameplay. I want to talk about it. Oh, Singleton Popper. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. I forgot. This looks like uh, Gate to the Afterlife. Come on, land, blue land. Okay. Can we scoop it up here? So we need our graveyard hate. I'm pretty sure that's um, one of those decks and we probably want Graph Diggers as well, which means we're taking out Search and Uros, which hurts us, but it's fine. Um, we still have Krasis for a bit of life gain. We could go Heliods if we really think it's the uh, the other list. Three Baffling Ends as well. Let's trim a bit here. Uh, we want that. Maybe the extra Wrath too. Could help. Vetoes could be good too, depending. Whispered you the card yesterday. Yeah, I just didn't check my Whispers. Unless it's on Discord, I usually don't check Whispers too much. Um, I think this is kind of okay, though. Okay, Sanctuary Lockdown card. Sanctuary Lockdown. Oh, yeah, because Conquerors gave you the, um... Conquerors gave you the, uh, ICR, right? Humans you control, oh god. This is a lot better than our last hand. I need to start out with Scattering Grove into Glacial. Yeah, it's Gate to the Afterlife, I called it. There you go. Enjoy your uh, your free loss there, buddy. You can scoop now. Is 
tortilla. <laughs> I mean, I can keep up the neutralize for one extra turn and just cycle the sensor if I need to. Like, this is fine. I can also just Shark Typhoon this. Dun 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 dun. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can read this card again. <laughs> like, the, you just scoop to this, man. It's fine. You don't have to worry about it. I think I take this. Probably gonna cycle sensor. I can make a 2-2 with Shark Typhoon and block all of these forever. That way they can't tutor out stuff. It gets rid of their tutoring abilities. Here. And if they end up resolving a big creature here, I can just um, can just deal with it. Yep. They're going wide, dude. Go ahead and baffle him this. Insta kill zombie voice from COD. Insta scoop. <laughs> Imagine that like old game. It was just like c -c 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 combo breaker. That one. The classic. You guys remember that one or no? I think this might actually come into play tapped. Yep. It means that I can't hold up neutralize, which is fine. They just want to exile their whole deck. That's fine. The game Tekken? No. It was not Tekken. It was, um... What was it called? That's fine. The Ravenous Chulipa Cobra. They're like, maybe I can get through. Maybe if I believe. This is an island, so it's kind of important to have that so it checks other stuff. Okay. Cavalier. Ooh, that's kind of spicy. I actually don't have a good answer to that right now. They might actually win this. Um, if I don't get like a Krasis or something to deal with that. Or like a Teferi. It's a two-turn clock. It's a little rough. Fiend Artisan is fine. Come on. Wrath! We'll keep both of these, I guess. We could. I think I want my draw to be slightly better, though. In the next turn. Especially since I can scry. Killer Instinct, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. I couldn't think of it for the life of me for some reason. I think I need to neutralize this, actually. Ghost Rider? Oh, debated.
It's your boy. Or girl. <laughs> they get Cavalier of Night off the top, dude. It's tough. Because <laughs> then they can sacrifice and then I have to answer it again. One to the bottom is good for us, though. If they hit a land here, we're probably fine. Last of top, Reaver is fine. That gives them a lot of... Uh, another thing to sack, basically. For that. They're going to do this main phase like a pleb, though. No? No. They're not. They held it. Ooh. That's nice. Karn, rest in peace deck. <laughs> Dude, rest in peace is so good. Love it. So strong. It just shuts off as Kanta in like a row, so you just have to sideboard those out and hope that your life gain from Krasis is enough. Which can be rough in certain matchups, but a lot of like the recurrable uh, damage, like Kroxa, kind of gets nerfed by um, rest in peace anyway. Like, you stop a lot of the direct damage. It's like, you don't bring it in against Burn, obviously. Like, of course. So. so I can Vantress here end of turn. Try to get, like, a Teferi 5. Teferi 5 basically locks us in. Yep. I can even scry during my upkeep if I want to set a stop for it. <laughs> yep, I'm going to. Might hold on to it. Just for a second. I can take two, you know. And they're probably going to play like Cavalier of Night or something here in a second. Or like maybe another Lazatop Reaper. Nope. I didn't set my stop in time. Bro. It's gonna be close, but I think we'll be okay. I think I need to hold this for one more turn. And then hopefully we get like a Shark Typhoon on top and we can kind of go off. Rexian Tower doesn't matter to us. They probably have like Gate to the Afterlife or something. Eventually, like, they probably drew into it. That's good. That, that makes our Wrath super worth it. Ooh, and they just got rid of two win cons too. These guys pump out dudes for ever. turn off my emotes. I'm not doing viewer games. Just wanted to say hi. Because I'm cancerous with, uh, with emotes, man. I'm not very good. Not a good person with those. They bring me to the dark side. There we go. Let the flow hate through. Let the hate flow through me. <laughs> Add in a chat option. <laughs> Come to the dark side. We have counter spells. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, boss. Gotta... Awesome. And we could still lose this game, honestly. I should have also scried there, so no attacks. We gotta set this preemptively. We gotta get better about that. I'm just too relaxed because I'm kind of ahead now. Yeah. You got it, boss. No problem. <laughs> They're just casting it so they take less life. They're gonna die to shark typhoons, man. Yep. You can see that I'm holding on to a land here. We 
good draw. Oh, I should have swung, probably. The wings. <laughs> Well, it's something else that they have to mod, which means it's more work for them. So it's like, and they don't have a lot of like money to, like the development team themselves aren't allocated a lot of money. So it's like, I don't know, I can understand why they wouldn't. Okay. Yep. You got it, man. I, I knew that was your deck. That's why I brought this in. <laughs> and oh graft diggers doesn't really help against them does it no graft diggers is actually pretty bad against them i forgot because like they don't put cards from the graveyard into play they put emblems using utilizing the graveyard so only rest in peace helps um that being said, we still can't have Search or Uro because our graveyards are just dead all the time. Um, probably a Teferi. And probably an Elspeth, just in case they start going off. It'd be kind of nice to have that. It's also another answer to one of the big creatures. Denial can stop gate? Yeah. Yeah, after it resolves, that's true. That is true. More counter spells? Yeah. Either of those would be fine. Yeah, pretty much red man. I think that's 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 the dealio. Like I understand it from a business perspective as well. It's fine. It is what it is. But what is it? Okay. That's the biggest question. What is it? Right, yeah, I knew what I knew what you meant. Um, you know, like the ability to fat shit would counteract that if they didn't if they uh went to tap it. Mm, yep. We also have Sublime, I think, right? Which we kept in, so Sublime can stop it as well. They're trying to figure out how to beat rest in peace. It's your counter pick, man. You have to get your combo off before I go. And the thing is, like, rest in peace retroactively, like, fixes um, gate to the afterlife anyway. Like, at any point that I draw the rest in peace, it exiles their graveyard, and then they don't have any more gas. And then I just have to wipe the board. And then it's it's over. Basically. We go into the whole, like, stalemate thing where as long as I don't top deck lands every single turn... I think the MVP of that last game, while it seemed like Rest in Peace, it was probably Vantress. I think I can keep this, just because it'll slow them down enough. Probably. Oh, so you sure. So they get maybe a Baffling Ender or Neutralize. Don't really care. They don't get Rest in Peace. That's why we didn't mull too hard for it, because we knew that they were bringing in Thought Caesar, they already had it. Oh yeah, take Crassus, that's fine. Um... Honestly, thinking about cycling this, but I'll play it as a land anyway. Fine. Doesn't give them any new information. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. So they get a baffling end potentially, or neutralize. Until maggot leaves play. Ooh. So that means I can just baffling end that, and then. Um, Okay, I'm just going to do Growth Spiral, though. I think that's more important to develop. Yeah, Libation, yep. Encounter Libation, though. You want to Spiral? Now they'll pro probably take Teferi, and that's fine. Yep, go for it. 
You got it, boss. No, people actually run it in uh, Gate to the Afterlife. It's really good, because it comes down as a 4-4, interrupts the hand again as an emblem. It's actually really solid. So rest in peace off the top, one time. Whoosh. No? Oh. That hurts. Um... I'm gonna baffling in the brain maggot just to prevent some damage here. And I get baffling end back, so. And now I have the thing is libation doesn't matter because I have baffling end. You know what I'm saying? Like who cares? I'll just sacrifice this and give them a 3-3. Okay, that's fine. They get uh baffling end again. I'm I'm probably just gonna cycle to neutralize at this point since I don't have the mana to cast it. And I need to get like rest in peace rolling or something here soon. There we go. Double Teferi seems pretty good. Please no more. No more things from the opponent, please. No more hand hate. They've already have all of their thought seasons in the graveyard. GG! See ya! Nice. Oh, and that got us out of... <laughs> the deck that got us out of gold. So hopefully this was helpful, kind of gave you an idea of how the deck functioned, showed off some gameplay. Um, and if you happen to like the content, there'll be a little end panel here where you can click on my face and subscribe. Really helps the channel out. And you can also check out another video if you want. Um, and I will catch you guys for the next video. Thanks again.